So hello and welcome back to another thrilling installment of Exploring Azeroth with Onyx and Beryl. And today we are going to be exploring the... I'm, I'm going to mess this up. Crossering Wilds. Which... I've always said is Kasarang, and it just hit me when I was looking at it that I was saying it completely wrong, so you know what? We're just going to call it the wilds through all of this, and that way I won't feel as embarrassed. So yeah, we're going to start here at Zoo's Watch, which was known internally by Blizzard as the Sad Panda Village which I just honestly am kind of finding hilarious, if you want to know the truth. Because Sad Panda Village just kind of makes me giggle. Now, there isn't too much... I mean, there's, there's a lot of questing to be done here. There's nothing really hidden here, except for one little thing that I found highly amusing, and that is up high above Zoo's Watch itself. So if you start where this little shrine is and make your way up the mountain, you come to a little shrine that I think is kind of hilarious because in a very Pandaren way, it is a statue celebrating beer. And if you know very much about the Pandaren in World of Warcraft, they all seem to really like their beer, and that makes me kind of happy. It is a shrine to the monk who taught them all how to find balance between the light and the dark ale, and therefore you could get all of the benefits of beer without all of the drawbacks of becoming stupidly inebriated. And honestly, that just, um, that to me just feels like such a Pandaren thing. So Zoo's Watch, like I said, um, they're having some issues and there's actually a really fun quest that you do through here. And you also end up getting a bunch of different toys by questing in Zoo's Watch, so if you haven't done it, Horde or Alliance, I highly recommend. Um, you get Ken Ken's Mask, and you also get, um, there's another toy that you get just from doing Zoo's Watch. Highly recommend it. Plus, you get to have the fun of a quest that has you kicking a Pandaren home. Because he's very depressed and he is waiting for the Thunderbirds to get him. Also, in this little cave, if you have not found it already, is one of the many treasures of Pandaria. So, there you go. If you haven't already done, done that and found that treasure, it is right there in that cave. So, while you're questing in Zoo's Watch, you're going to do a bunch of stuff, and you are going to drive out the Shah of Despair from the village and relight the three fires that hold back the tigers, and then you will be moving on. If you are Alliance, you will be moving on to the Incursion, and if you're Horde, you will be moving on to Thundercleft. Also, and this is, I, I have not really been a PvPer, I think I've said it a million times, but this area, if you are into PvP, is the Alliance Landing Zone. Later on we'll see the Horde Landing Zone, there's all sorts of battles you can do, but I found this place really interesting in the uninstanced, um, non-PvP type area. So. I found it, I thought it was a fun little hideout, and figured I would show it to you. Now as we venture along, you're going to see a whole lot of Mogu ruins, and the, the Mogu were the subjugators, and they, they did a lot of really bad things, but eventually the Pandaren learned how to become monks, and they, they fought back. 
So we're going to just do a little survey of all of the Mogu who are still trying to become subjugators before we zip on over to a really fun place, and that is Turtle Beach. Turtle Beach is the legendary shore where Lulang, the adventurer, set off on his journeys with Shen Shenzin Su. Shenzin Su is actually, fun fact, the turtle that carries the Wandering Isle on his back. He grew so big that he ended up with an entire starting zone on his back. Um, Lu Lang, every five years after wandering off on Shenzhen Su, would come back and more and more Pandaren would join him on the back of Shenzhen Su. And every Sunday night, from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. server time on whatever server you're in, they have a festival here, which is the Wanderers Festival. Also, it is the spot where one of the scrolls of Lulang is, is to be found. So if you're collecting those, don't forget to come to Turtle Beach and find the scroll. And be sure while you are there to actually read the scroll because it tells the whole story of Lu Lang and it's really kind of awesome. Supposedly to this day, if a Pandaren is affected with a lot of wanderlust, people say that they are waiting for the turtle. And I thought that was kind of sweet. So, now that we have looked at Lu Lang and his beautiful turtle, we are going to keep on keeping on as we head out into the Narsong Trench, which is the area where the fishers all hang out. But before we do any of the fishermen that are hanging out, we're going to swim all the way down into the Narsong Trench. There is a quest that sends you down here, well, several daily quests from the anglers that will send you down here. And if you don't know that there is a cave down here, you can spend a lot of time just kind of going around in circles. Am I saying that from experience? Probably, yes, yes I am. But you swim down and then you come up and there is an elite crab that you will probably kill more times than you feel like killing but there he is it is the the elite crab right in front of you you kill him and i can't remember which quest it is that sends you down here to kill him all i remember is it was um it was a lot more of a pain in the butt to find him than I really want to admit. So, yeah. But that is one of the many quests that the anglers will send you out on. Not to put too fine a point on it, but the anglers' quests out here in Pandaria, they are 100% worth it to get your character up to Exalted with the Anglers, if for no other reason than pretty inexpensive water walking for all of your mounts. Back in the day, when, when I first ground out Exalted with the Anglers, it wasn't so much for the water walking equipment that you can now send off to all of your alts, but it was for the only mount in the game that gave you water walking, and that was the Angler's Water Skitterer. I don't know if that's actually what it's called, but it's the Azure Water Skimmer mount. And it's very cool. And then later on in Warlords of Draenor, I spent far too much time fishing up Lunkers so that I could actually get the red version of the water strider. And then, I think it was only a little while later, Blizzard did away with that being the only way to water walk, and instead you had to go out and buy from the anglers once you were exalted the, the water walking. But 
there is my Crimson Water Strider. I'm very proud of my Crimson Water Strider because that represented a lot of work. Because to get Nat Pangle to become your best friend in Warlords of Draenor, he had to be your best friend in Pandaria. And to get him to be your best friend in Pandaria was a super long grind. So there's the Azure one, you saw the red one, and now it's time to move on yet again as we look around the Anglers area in... Um, in Pandaria. So the Angler's Expedition, it's, it's kind of cool, and you get sent out quite often to fight the Riverblade tribe of Sorok, who are over here fighting the Anglers. It's kind of the reason that they've moved out into the Angler's Wharf, which is where you find them now. So, yeah. That is the Angler's Expedition, and I do believe the next place that I went, it's so much fun watching this and doing a voiceover afterwards. Some days I do the voiceover or I do the voicing while I'm recording, and sometimes I record footage and then come back like I'm doing now and do the voiceover afterwards. I'm never sure what I'm doing. YouTube is a fun, fun place. I think we stop here at the incursion, but I can't really remember. But that's okay, I have it queued up. And yes, we are stopping at the incursion, which is a fun little thing, because to get this, you actually have to break an oubliette. Now, this isn't the official oubliette, which is a deep dark hole that is something is put in and then forgotten about, but it is a magical oubliette that you have to break open. Also, not too far from the incursion is this little goblin who is a member of the Nessingwary Safari who will give you the breadcrumb quest that will eventually lead you to Hemet Nessingwary. And um, she wants to obviously kill everything in the, uh, the wilds here. And from her, we are going to move on to Onyx, who is going to take us to Thundercleft. And honestly, one of the saddest quests in all of World of Warcraft. And that is the, the Torin quest here. If you've never done it, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but it is a heartbreaking quest that I highly recommend that you come and do. Um, in fact, I might do a deep dive on just on the characters that are involved in this quest. They were originally going to call Thundercleft New Torejo, which if you uh, remember, Old Torejo was kind of ruined, and New Torejo is not looking much better. But yeah, I'm not going to say too much more about this quest chain, except for the fact that it ends up with two absolutely adorable little Torin babies. Now, Beryl is going to go on through the, the ruins of Dojin. A lot of the questing in Pandaria you can do on either Horde or Alliance. There are certain things that, that are one or the other, but a lot of them, as I've gone through and, and done each zone on Horde and on Alliance, a lot of them have a lot of similarities. Like, um, the Alliance side that starts at the Incursion actually has its own tragic storyline that is centered around the pools of youth and everything, but I, I really feel like the Horde side kind of takes the cake on tragic stories. Also, if I didn't mention it in my last couple uh, uh, Pandaria things, um, a lot of the rares that are scattered through here are really worthwhile to kill as you get some really nice equipment if you are a 
well, actually anything. I was gonna say if you are like a class that needs it, but you get some really nice equipment. It's kind of worth it to, to actually go through and do everything. There's also this fun little fishing village and I don't think that there are very many quests that send you over here except possibly some fishing quests, but it's one of those little villages that I kind of love that are just out here in Pandaria. They have a, a fish that they keep just sort of in, in a netted off area. You've got kids flying kites. It's, it's really kind of sweet. Unfortunately for them, it is right here by the Temple of the Red Crane, which is being overtaken by Yet Norsha. Now, this is actually a lot of fun because at least on the Alliance side, when you're questing, you actually have a, a mission to cleanse the Temple of the Red Crane and to, I guess, cheer up, bring joy, uh, bring determination back to the, the monks that are here. And you're being helped in your quest by none other than Prince Anduin and his, given the fact that I just redid these quests the other day when I was, was going through here, oh, Anduin's model in Mists of Pandaria was unfortunate. It, it is not the most high resolution model, but it's fun to quest with him nonetheless. But right down here, we have the Red Crane, Chi-Gi himself, who is in very dire straits, but that's okay. You and Anduin are going to maybe not fix everything, but you're gonna help a lot. Now from the temple, we go to the Cradle of Chi-Gi, which is where you can find daily quests that help you with your reputation and it's worthwhile to get the reputation with honestly with everything in wow because it gives you access usually to exclusive mounts but definitely to exclusive transmog and let's be honest a lot of us are here for the transmog i know that there are a lot of people that are here for other things but i guess i can only speak for myself I'm here for the transmog. So from there, we are going to head over to an area that I was so hopeful for, and I'm kind of thinking either I didn't spend enough time doing it, or maybe Blizzard has patched it out of the game. And if they have, I'm very, very sad about it. And that is out here on the Southern Isles. As we head out here to the Southern Isles, you know, this is where the Horde have their little base for the PvP type things that are going on. But more importantly, there is the Isle of Frogs. And the Isle of Frogs is a mystery spot in World of Warcraft. And I spent... I'll be honest, I spent far more time out here than I probably should have trying to get the king of all the frogs to spawn. Why? Because it would have been funny. Unfortunately, he didn't spawn for me, which makes me very sad. But you can see, it's just this island. You've got warning signs telling you of frogs everywhere. And as you run around, there are frogs here. There are frogs that are doing magic. And the picture that just flashed was of Croatoan. And Cro, or I'm sorry, Croakin is the king frog who evidently can one-shot parties. And supposedly, if you spend enough time killing frogs on his island, he spawns. I spent a lot of time killing frogs on his island and he didn't spawn. So I'm a little bit sad about that, but that means that we can just head on over to Unga Ingu, which is a Hosen area and it's kind of hilarious. And when you're out here, there's this 
awesome empty boat. Unfortunately, it cannot count as a house in the barrel. Counts this as a house book because it doesn't have any furniture, but in absence of anything else, and before I found a much better ship, this was always where I would put my pirate characters. So, there we are on Unga Ingu, which is fun to say, if nothing else. The other thing about Unga Ingu is you get another one of the scrolls. So if you are looking for Lorewalker Cho's scrolls, it is at the back of this cave in Unga Ingu, right over here in the corner. And on it, you learn all about the Hosen and their maturity and lifespan. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So yeah, that is where you learn about a um, little bit about the Hosen. And then there really isn't much left here in the, the Kasarang Wilds, or the Krasarang Wilds, or however you say it. Except for this fun little fishing village of Marista, where they are having a problem with crocolisks. And they send you over to this fun little area, and there are crocolisks everywhere. They send you over to Key Crack to do all sorts of things. There's also this fun little hideout area that I figured I would show you. And Mort Breath um, crocolisks all over the aisle. It's also where the Naeli Lagoon is, which is where there's a bunch of different quests that I haven't done in a while, so I don't really remember them. All I remember is you have to make a raft and go talk to the old lady who is on her own raft in the middle of the, the water. I should redo those. Also, because I forgot to take you over here, this is Fallsong Village. It is a a bunch of the fish people, the, the Jinyu, and there's another rare that spawns very regularly inside of this building right here. And sometimes he drops cloth leggings that if you're looking for something that won't show under some of the, the new transmog dresses that the the Trader's Post gives, you can check with him. And then we just have, this is an area where you can fish up a ring for the Angler's Expedition. In case you were wondering where that quest was, it's out there. You fish up one of those ginormous monsters out near Fallsong Village, and then uh, you get the ring. That's an easy one. The, the Angler's expedition dailies are kind of a pain in the butt because they take a lot longer than a lot of other dailies in WoW. I guess I should also mention before Beryl signs off and Onyx jumps back on to take us to the last little bit of this, that there is also a rare hunter pet that can usually be found up near the falls area just up above the Sentinel base camp. Um, it is a crimson colored ghost porcupine. So if you're looking for that, that is where it is usually found. The last spot Beryl's gonna be is the Sentinel base camp. And then she is going to bid us a fond farewell. And we are going to switch back over to Onyx who is going to finish everything off in the, the Horde camp, which is over in the same general vicinity and doing the same basic quests as the Sentinels questing area has. I do need to go back and redo the Horde side quests. It's been long enough since I've done them that I've forgotten what their version of the Red Crane quests are. Somehow I'm doubting that you have Anduin with you. Anyway, just like over on the eastern side of the island where the alliance has their base set up for pvp type skirmishes the western side is where the horde is set up as you can see again i don't have it all opened up um, this is one of those things that 
Maybe I should get into one of these days, but I never actually have. So we're just going to fly around a little bit, check it out before it gets turned into a horde base. From what I understand, there is like a whole lumber camp that ends up getting set up down here, and I always found that kind of interesting. One of these days I'll get into it, but probably not. Not today. So here we are at the, the horde area, and then we're going to fly up into the Forbidden Wilds, which is the entryway although probably not the entryway that we will take next week into our next area that we will be going to. And our next area that we're going to be going to is one of my favorites. It's the Valley of the Four Winds. So, you know, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. Let me know um, if you did the Horde or Alliance like campaign stuff in the Kasarang Wilds because that's something I still have never done and let me know if there's anything that's like worthwhile and if you actually have to PvP to get the rewards. Because if you have to PvP to get the rewards, I probably won't do it, but if you don't, I just might. So drop something in the comments down below. Thank you as always for joining me. Leave me a thumbs up if you don't mind, and I will see you later.